Welcome everybody to this Euro NMD webinar organized in collaboration with the Rare Neurological Disorders ERN and the European Academy of Neurology. Uh, this webinar uh, will start a new cycle about CMT. During the webinar, you can uh, put your questions in the Q&A and chat through the tool of chat of the Zoom. And uh, at the end, we'll voice the questions and we'll allow you to speak with our speaker of the day. We have with us uh, Stefano Previtali, who's presenting the webinar, and David Paraisen is uh, the lead for the working group on peripheral nerve of the ERN Euro NMD. Uh, I thank both to be here and helping us with this very interesting uh, theme. David, I would be honored to pass the floor to you for an introduction of this cycle. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Antonio. Thank you and thank you to the attendants for being uh, here today and for those who will follow the seminar, the webinar afterwards. October is the month of CMT awareness, so it's a very important month. And we decided to have a cycle of webinars about CMT, uh, starting with Stefano Previtari today about the mechanism of charcoal to disease. Next week, I will speak uh, on Thursday about treatment of charcoal to disease. And on the next Thursday, that is the 19th of October, we will have a uh, Cleopas Cleopa. Uh, speaking about gene therapy, and uh, the um, cycle of webinars will be closed on the 26th of uh, October, again Thursday, by Shara Matarian, uh, speaking about diagnosis of charcot disease. We couldn't follow the exact uh, uh, sequence, uh, which has been uh, pathomechanism diagnosis for organization reasons, but uh, uh, it's uh, yeah. good anyway. It's a real pleasure to have here today Stefano Previtali, who is a, a distinct scientist and neurologist working in the uh, Instituto San Rafael in Milan, when he is uh, uh, head of the Neuromuscular Repair Research Unit and chief of the Neuromuscular Disease Team in the Neurology Unit. And uh, he had made, uh, has made a lot of contribution in the field of CMT and also myopathies. And, uh, is in a very special position and a very rare kind of both clinician and scientist, which is very rare to be found nowadays. And, uh, and that gives him a, a broad view of the complexity of the neuropathies. And uh, so his special view is very important in giving us an appropriate webinar about the mechanism of CMT. And thank you very much, Stefano, for being here today. He's also a member of the management group of the uh, neuropathy working group of the uh, ERA. Thank you, Stefano. Thank you, Davide. Now, now I share the, the screen in order to be ready with the presentation. So can you see it? Yes, we can. OK, so <clears throat> the idea is to give you an introduction to the pathomechanism of CNTs and uh, uh, when I was starting with pre the preparation of the, the this webinar, um, I realized that it, it is a lot of work. And uh, of course, I cannot touch every single gene or every single mechanism. It's quite impossible. So the idea is to give you a general view of what's going on, um, giving just a brief introduction of what it means to have a CMT, and then to give you a couple of examples of what what happens in, in the myelinating forms and in axonal forms. So um, you all know the CNTs is the acronym for Charcot-Marie 2 disease. So it takes the name from these emeritus colleagues that in the, at the end of the 19th century described for the first time the disease. It belongs to the so-called inherited peripheral neuropathies. Uh, I, I would say that now it is interchangeable, the, the, the term. So now we, we try to use the term CNT to describe all the forms of genetic uh, neuropathies, but in fact, the, the pure CNT are chronic, demyelinating, and or uh, axonal sensory motor <coughs> peripheral neuropathy. The, the characteristic is to be so both sensory and motor, and to be, of course, length dependent in the appearance. 
it's uh, um, a rare disease, of course, and uh, can start usually in the first two decades of life, but may occur at any age in the life of a person. It can be inherited as a dominant, recessive, or ex-linked, but in many cases we have sporadic forms, so we have no knowledge about inheritance. And these are more difficult to distinguish, for example, for acquired neuropathy, especially if they, uh, the onset is, is in after the, the age of 40. Uh, any kind of mutation could be involved, so small mutations, deletions, or duplications. Uh, from the clinical point of view, I say that lens dependence, so we have to expect to see a defect in uh, weakness and atrophy in the distal muscles of the limbs, so particularly the feet, the, the legs, as you see, with the characteristic appearance of champagne bottle inverted, as you see here. Let's see if I can use the pointer. As you can see here, but uh, of course, the other characteristic is the pest cavus, uh, the hammer tools, or uh, the, the hand clothes, for example, which uh, could be present. Of course, this uh, take care about the, the, the motor compartment, the defects, but usually those patients may have also sensory deficits. They could be positive, it could be negative, so they can present paresthesia or pain, or may have a defect. So loss in sensation, for example, again, about pain. And the, the other thing they may have, uh, of course, is uh, deep sensation uh, defects, which in coordination of movements and imbalance. This is just to give you an example of what happens if you have a CNT. For example, this is a, a, more or less a classical form. So with stepping gait, uh, you see the atrophy of the legs. Uh, the, the, the cause is a very rare, ultra rare, uh, CNTs, but from the, the appearance of the patients is not distinguishable, for example, for from a more frequent uh, CNT1A4. Of course, they could be also more severe forms. So such, for example, for this little girl, you see has a, a serious problem in motricity already also in the proximal muscles, and which is due to a very rare recessive form. Or this other little girl down here in which uh, the problem is not what it's not uh, a weakness so the the, the 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 strength is perfect this girl has only a problem in a sensory in deep sensation so it, it can coordinate properly the movements uh, but but the, the, the strength of the muscle are perfect in normal of course they are divided uh, originally in demyelinating axonal form based on the nerve conduction velocity in the upper limbs the non-dominant non um, arm, and uh, later on we also introduced the intermediate form. This is still useful, so it, for us it's useful to know is, if it's a demyelinating or an axonal form, because in case of a demyelinating form, we just go on with a specific MLPA um, uh, test for the genetic point of view, instead to perform other analysis, such for example NGS. So, is still important and reflects if the disease starts in Schwann cells or starts in exons. So the malinating form is supposed to be a, a defect that originates in Schwann cells, axonal forms, a defect originating in exons. But we have to say that at a certain point, both Schwann cell and exons are involved. Of course, you may have a specific uh, pathological aspects, uh, so demyelination, remyelination, or chronic demyelination, such, for example, onion bulbs are typical of demyelinating forms, whereas you see signs of axonal degeneration and regeneration in axonal forms. In, in the past, we were always doing or often doing nerve biopsy for the diagnosis of these patients, but now with genetics, this is no more useful or necessary. We do uh, nerve biopsy only if you have Dubs in relation with other acquired forms, or if you have to to prove specific uh, genetic forms which are not 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 sure. So uh, we now know that many genes can generate a CNT. So you see here now there are more than one hundred and thirty genes have been developed and, and and discovered. And the difficult thing is that most of these genes originate a very a, a phenotype which is more or less similar for all of those genes. So there are some insights in which for few forms you can understand or you can base 
what is the the, 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 the genetic the, the gene responsible but in many cases this is not possible so it's not you cannot distinguish a form from another from the phenotype of the patients and the complexity is also related to the fact that the same gene can originate different phenotypes so you see the mpz uh, mutation can give rise to a severe congenital hypomyelination forms, a moderate demyelination, uh, demyelinating uh, CNT or a late onset axonal form. So it's not easy to um, uh, <clears throat> to, to understand why uh, different genes can originate similar phenotype, or the same gene can can instead give rise to a different phenotype itself. So uh, it's more easy to 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 make to make this connection if you if you look at the some of the genes which are, are involved for example <clears throat> myelin genes if you mutate it you 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 can understand why those patients uh, originated the myelinating form or if you mutated the neurofilament which is a specific intermediate form intermediate filaments of, of the axon you may have instead an axonal CMT. It's more difficult instead to connect with why, for example, a common gene which is involved in the um, function of the Golgi or endoplasmic reticulum or in, or in vesicle uh, transport or in the mitochondrial function can, that, that, that is present in every cell of the body uh, ends up with the generation of a CNT neuropathy. So this is the, the, the first question that we, we will try to answer in this. Uh, in this webinar, and, and also uh, why, uh, how many genes are involved, how they, they are interconnected in order to generate a very similar phenotype at, at the end of, in, in our patients. So there were a, a lot of discovery in this year suggesting that how the same gene could be involved in, in different folds. So not only the classical CNT, but also, for example, motor a neuropathy or sensory neuropathy may be generated by the same gene. But uh, nowadays we know that uh, if not the same gene, but at least the same molecular pathway is mostly involved in any neurodegenerative disorder or genetic and neurodegenerative disorder in, in which there is a length dependent uh, event. So anytime you interact in a length dependent way, with the function of the neuron and of course the glial cell which are interconnected, you end up in a way with a, a severe or, or, or not severe um, neuropathy or other uh, disorder, for example, uh, spinal cerebellar atrophy or for example, uh, ALS or already passive paraplegia. So try to answer to this question, we, we come to the path of mechanism and I divided those for the malinating form uh, from those for uh, axonal form. So starting from the malinating forms, uh, I will touch only two genes because otherwise it's too complicated to, to talk about all the genes involved. And so I will talk about the two genes which are responsible for 90% of the demyelinating forms, which are PMP22 and, and myelin protein zero. So if we start on BMP22, um, this is a, a tetraspan molecule, as you see, uh, it is introduced in the membrane and it is produced by Schwann cell. Definitely, it, it, it is important for the formation and the maintenance of the compact myelin, but it, it, it definitely it has also other functions in the cells which are not well characterized still. So it's, in, it's involved in cell cycle regulation, it's involved in Schwann cell proliferation and growth, it's involved in Schwann cell differentiation, and also it's involved in other functions, for example, in uh, trafficking uh, of other molecules and in the regulation of the actin cytoskeleton. So many functions, probably, in the cells. Um, the two main forms that arise from a, a mutation in PMP22 are the CNT1A and HNPP. So the CNT1A is the classical demyelinating neuropathy, uh, is the most frequent one. Uh, instead, HNPP is a, the hereditary neuropathy by liability to pressure palsy. So it is usually a mono or multiple uh, neuropathy due to uh, uh, a liability of the nerve to be to be to undergone damage after um, normal. Uh, events such as a prolonged uh, pressure of, of, of the nerves itself. 
Uh, so the mechanism that which regulate these two uh, events is, is related to gene dosage. So if you reduce 50% or you increase 50% the amount of the PMP22 gene. In the first case, you have HMPP. In the second case, you have the CNT1A. How it happens? So why we have people with uh, one copy or three copies of the PMP22 gene? So everything happens during meiosis of a single person in which you have homologous recombinations. And sometimes you may have an unequal uh, crossing over because the two chromosomes, the 17 chromosomes, they do not um, pair in a proper way. So PMP22 is flanked by repeated sequences that can be exchanged in a in not proper way. So that this, uh, after meiosis, this person will have still two PMP22 gene, but on the same chromosome. So the other chromosome has no PMP22, PMP22 gene at all. Uh, this person is perfect, so has no problem. Whereas in, this, in the other generation, he may donate the duplicated gene chromosome so with the other parents the new in uh, person will have three copies of pmp 2022 or if donates the the null uh, chromosome will have only one copy from the other parents of the pmp 22 gene so is in the subsequent generation that you can have <clears throat> uh, cnt1a or hmpp uh, usually these events happens in in father uh, but i didn't find a, an explanation to that so we can prove that if you lose 50% of, of, of PMP22, you develop an aerobity because you can reproduce it in mice. So there have been uh, rats and then mice in which uh, one gene was deleted. And you see they also develop a similar neuropathy as in human, which is characterized by the presence of this redundant myelin loop, which are called tomacula, which are arise or very close to the, to the nodes in, in a nerve, and that pathologically characterize the disease. If you still reduce uh, the, the amount of genes, so you delete both the PMP22 gene, you have more, much more severe neuropathy. And this happens also in human, of course, so it is reproduced. Uh, why in, in HMPP you have uh, uh, mononeuritis, so, uh, which are the expression of a conduction block, uh, was not known uh, in, in a simplistic way. You may say you have less PMP22, and so the mining is, 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 is um, not properly formed, and that's why it's not properly working. But there were insights by the group on Jun Li tried to investigate why it happens. And first of all, Jun Li demonstrated that, in fact, also in the mouse, you have a conduction block. So if you pinch the nerve of a mouse, uh, as compared to control, you have a you have a delay, a much delay in recovery, and you obtain the conduction block even in even uh, with a, a very mild compression as compared to what you have to do in a normal in a normal nerve. Moreover, um, uh, the second question was it, it, that the conduction block is due to the presence of the tomacula, which in some way compress the nerves or affect the function of the nerve of the axon or arise by a different mechanism. And the answer was coming also from, uh, from the group in Jun Li. So he, he could demonstrate that at the nodes, not in all the nodes, but in some of the nodes of those animals, there was an impaired um, sealing of the paranodal loops of the Schwann cell. So he, he observed that there was missing of some molecules, for example, Mark or uh, John C, which seal one each other, the paranodal loops of the Schwann cells. So without these molecules, this area is disrupted, is destabilized, is not sealing the nodes, and therefore you have an altered uh, conduction, so um, nerve potentials, and that generates the block. And also this um, increased permeability in this region alters the, the myelin and probably provokes the, 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 the appearance of tomacula. So first you have conduction block, and then probably you have the generation of the tomacula. How it happens and why pmp 2 is involved in this, it's, this is still not completely clear, but in some way, PMP22 is important 
in trafficking these adhesion molecules in paranodes and in regulating the actin cytoskeleton. So without PMP22, molecules are not transported properly in the paranodes and the, the actin cytoskeleton is not properly um, uh, regulated. And that's why you have uh, increased permeability and then you have conduction block and then you have generation of, of tumacular. On the other side, we say if you have an increased number of PMP22 genes, so free copy, you develop again a, a neuropathy. And this uh, uh, again was demonstrated in, in rat and mouse. You see here that the more the number of genes, you know, PMP22 genes you put in a mouse, the more severe the neuropathy you, you, you observe. Uh, uh, the, the exact mechanism is, is not clear, uh, as was supposed to be involved in the effect that the, the two uh, uh, um, uh, genes on the same chromosomes impairs the translation of the chromosome or regulation of the, the chromosome or, or also, sorry, of the gene transcription. But this is probably not true because the person, the original person, with only two copies on the same chromosome is perfectly normal. So it was supposed because in the mice, there were observed alteration in uh, lipid trafficking in uh, a metabolic um, supply by Schwann cell to neurons. And for example, in, in the influx of calcium that were, those events are important for the uh, generation of the neuropathy, but the Z mechanism, at least to me, is not known. What is known in, is that if you have three copies, four copies, five copies of the gene, you have a neuropathy. If you apply gene therapy in a mouse, uh, if you block the silenced DNA and you reduce the amount of gmp 2 you can revert the phenotype. So it's, it's just a gene dosage, the, the cause of the disease. We may also have point mutation in PNP22. So uh, in this case, you have only uh, a modification of a single protein. And uh, of course, in this case, if point mutation uh, determines a loss of function, so the protein is not formed, then you have again HMPP. If a point mutation instead is a missense, uh, you have here a gain of function uh, mechanism that causes the neuropathy because the neuropathy could be even much more severe than uh, CNT1, classical CNT1A. And this was also observed and proved in mice. So there is this mutant, Trimberger, which is missense, which is quite severe as a phenotype. And the mechanism probably is related to the trafficking of PMP22. The mutated PMP22, so the normal PMP22 is trafficked to the to the membrane, so to 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 to, to develop its function in in myelination. Instead, the mutated is mostly retained in the endoplasmic reticulum, and here uh, it it stimulates a stress response in the cells that we will see later on for myelin protein zero, and this is disrupting the the cell function and probably is causing the the neuropathy. Then rapidly we come to uh, myelin protein zero. And it, it, in this case, we are still a transmembrane protein with an immunoglobulin-like uh, structure. And definitely P0 is important for myelin compaction and maintenance. It's a sort of, 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 uh, of glue. It works in tetramers. Tetramers are inserted on the opposite side of the Schwann cell membrane after unsheathing the axons. And it works like a a brick uh, of legal to to fix and to and to compact the mining in in, in this um, in this structure. So it's quite obvious if if you have less bricks, so you have less mining protein zero, you may have a problem in generating the mining. And this was the um, the typical explanation uh, of a, a disorder which is usually dominant. So only one single uh, allele is mutated usually. And so it was thought it was a loss of function mechanism. And this is true for some of, 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 the, of, the, of the patients. And it was reproduced by um, generating mice in which uh, one gene was deleted. You see it develops a neuropathy, is a mild neuropathy with the characteristic very similar, so uncompaction of the myelin sheets. Uh, as, as compared to, to patients with a similar phenotype. Um, there is also a problem in gene dosage. Uh, if you 
if you reduce uh, uh, the, the, the gene, so instead to eliminate one single copy, you, you eliminate both copies of the malign protein in zero, you have much more severe phenotype, and this is also present in human. But what is interesting is that even if you increase uh, copies of the genes, you have a phenotype. And this was uh, uh, observed uh, uh, when I was in the lab with, uh, of Larry Rabbits and Laura Feltri in the, at the early of this century. Uh, we generated the mice in which three or more copies of the malign protein zero was was expressed, and the more the, the copies, the more the phenotype was was severe. And this was also observed in humans. For example, the rare description of humans with duplication of uh, malign protein zero that have a, 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 a neuropathy. Uh, why this happens? Uh, maybe this is in, simplistic in, in explanation, but this is sort of blue. So you express too early pre-zero, too much pre-zero during development. Probably you block the development of Schwann cells. As you see here, this is a, a Schwann cell which is blocked uh, before it has sorted the axon. So in, in early events during development, all oh, this Schwann cell is, is blocked uh, at the promyelinating stage. Uh, so you block, you, you differentiate too early probably these Schwann cells, and that's why you develop uh, a neuropathy, which is developmentally uh, uh, related. So it's a sort of congenital hypomyelination in this case. Um, but most of, of the other mutations on the malign protein zero were not related to loss of function, and they were not related to uh, duplications, uh, but are related to missense mut mutations, which are quite more, much more severe to what usually you would observe in a mouse in which you delete a single gene. So again, uh, in, in the lab, uh, Larry Rabbits, uh, it was supposed that the mechanism was a gain of function, and to prove it uh, was generated the mouse in which, together with two normal alleles of pin zero, was introduced a third allele with the missense mutation that in human was supposed to be causative of the disease. So if it was a loss of function mechanism, of course, with two normal alleles, you have enough myelin protein to have a normal phenotype. Instead, as you can see here, these mice develop a very severe phenotype. So a classical demyelinating neuropathy, uh, again, resembling what you can observe in, in, in humans. And later on, uh, uh, Larry Rabbits and then uh, Maurizio D'Antonio uh, demonstrated that this was still due to the fact that the trapping of the mutated P0 is altered. So the P0 stopped in many cases in the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, activates an, uh, an stress response uh, because of the unfolded protein response mechanism. So a, a number of molecular pathways are activated in try to read out on to, to manage these uh, proteins which are accumulating the cells. Uh, when this is not possible, so proteostasis doesn't work, usually uh, the, the mechanism uh, brings the cell to apoptosis, and that's why you develop the neuropathy. So many cases, uh, the neuropathy in the malign protein zero is due to this uh, unfolded protein response mechanism. And there are now uh, drugs that try to, to solve the problem or at least to attenuate the problem. So to, uh, to act on the proteostasis and we will see if there are uh, any effects in humans in, in, in future clinical studies. You have to think that uh, the protein zero can also act uh, uh, with a dominant mechanism negative, the dominant mechanism mechanism. For example, in this case, we generated the mouse in which the protein zero has an extra peptide attached. In this case, it was a MIC peptide. And this, uh, this protein zero is, is correctly trafficked, trafficked into the myelin, but in the myelin altered the, the, the function of, of the tetramer. So you see the laminate, the myelin sheets, as observed also in humans. So also this mechanism could be responsible for the disease. So a dominant negative effect into the myelin sheets. And to, this could, could be also the mechanism of another uh, type of mutation that could, could be um, present in malin protein zero, which is related to glycosylation. So this is a protein which is glycosylated and uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the group of Genoa, particularly Marina Grandis, uh, showed in the past that uh, hypoglycosylation or hyperglycosylation of malin protein zero due to different 
missense mutation affects the adhesiveness of this protein and affects the trafficking of the protein. So, sorry. Hyperglycosylated or hyperglycosylated protein could be uh, retained or transported to the membrane, interact with the, the, the wild type protein, and interfere with these uh, um, sealing effects uh, to, to compact the myelin. This was the case, for example, of mutation in which you had hyperglycosylation and were demonstrated then in a mouse in which this, this mutation was introduced. So also a hyperglycosylation may probably may have similar effects uh, as was demonstrated in vitro. And uh, it was shown also that some of these hyperglycosylated mole um, molecules are involved in the generation of the axonal form of CMTs. The exact mechanism is not known, but Antonio is now developing uh, studies in, 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 in the model in which it seems that it, it, hypoglycosylated P0 affects the metabolism of Schwann cells. And so, uh, especially uh, the mm, metabolic support that Schwann cells has to neurons or to axons. And this is probably the mechanism by which uh, later on they develop an axonal neuropathy. So, we have seen that we have seen that there are different mechanisms that affect uh, and hit the, the, the Schwann cells. But in a demyelinating situation, so the single Schwann cell unit could be everywhere along the length of the neuron. So this Schwann cell could be affected, this one or this one. So in, in, in principle, a demyelinating form is not length dependent. So because it could be the Schwann cell could be hidden everywhere along the axon. Instead, we know that those demyelinating uh, neuropathies in, are Left dependent in, in, in manifestation, but every clinician knows that this is mostly due to the axonal degeneration, which is a subsequent event in, uh, in case of demyelination <coughs> of the nerve. So it, the left dependent is due to the secondary axonal degeneration that happens when you affect the Schwann cell. Why it happens uh, is still uh, there are many. Mm -hmm. possible events. What we know is that uh, uh, demyelinated axons uh, are necessitates much more energy to maintain the, um, the potential, the, the axon of potential, and this causes a disruption also of the clustering of onion channel at the nodes, and it causes an increase in, in the influx of sodium channel into the axon. Increased sodium channel means uh, activation of calpases and therefore activation of degradating, degradating uh, events, but also increase of calcium entry into the axon, which impairs again, uh, which impairs axonal trafficking, for example, blocks the trafficking of mitochondria, which alters the polymerization of neurofilaments, which form aggregates and uh, again, interfere with axonal transports and uh, which generates a number of events which affects the transports of uh, all the elements in the axon towards the periphery. Moreover, you also those segments of axon also lose the, the, the trophic support which is offered by Schwann cells. And so if you think that in a long way the, the, you, you sum all these events, you may understand why in a very <clears throat> distant uh, area of the axon, uh, where axonal transport is more impaired, you may have the uh, you may have less possibility to repair to recover, and you may develop uh, left dependent axonal degeneration. Most of these events uh, are also explaining why we uh, have. Uh, axonal uh, CMTs due to mutation in some genes. And so now uh, I exchange the paradigm and try to, to talk about what happens if you have an axonal degeneration. So everything starts by the fact, as, as we have already introduced, that uh, axons are very long. And uh, uh, the more are long, the more it's difficult for them, for, for the stomach to, to, to traffic things at the periphery and on the reverse, things that have to be transported from the periphery to the center, it takes 
much more time. A anything is wrong in this process, uh, of course, uh, can affect the survival of, 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 of the neurons and therefore the survival of the axon. There are at least four general events which are uh, um, involved in the, in the many genes mutated in, um, in causing uh, uh, axonal damage. Uh, they are not all the events, so not all the genes are included, but many of them are included in these events, and um, which include axonal transport, which is more intuitive, mitochondrial dynamics, uh, the the processing and the generation of protein and the interaction between organelles within these uh, these neurons on the axons, and of course the more intuitive events is, is a sonar transport. So things have to be transported from the center to the periphery, and vice versa. If everything interferes with this, you have the facts, and so you may have a problem in transporting here nutritive. Um, substances or you to eliminate from here to the center for example catabolite substances and therefore in this area you may have a problem uh in uh, supply uh the the, 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 the the terminal of the axon and that's why you have degeneration of course this implied uh the um, some uh some molecules in particular uh the rail track on which uh, axonal transport is, is performed, so microtubules and uh, neurofilaments, which are very close to microtubules, and of course motors, which are uh, kinases and uh, kinase and, and DNA in complex, which transport, uh, of course, cargoes towards the periphery or towards the center, so towards the, the the soma of, of, of the neurons. So everything is interfering with these simple molecules, of course, is interfering with axonal transport and is causing uh, an axonal damage. So if you look here, there are many genes which have been described affecting the motors. So kinesine, or dinaine, or the dinaine complex, uh, as well as genes which interfere with the polymerization or the construction of microtubules or neurofilaments or chaperons, which are important in the regulation of these uh, microtubules and neurofilaments. So you see that many genes which are involved in, in, uh, in the construction and in generation of axonal transport are already linked together in a single molecular pathway. So it's now reasonable why many different genes can end up with axona neuropathy, even if they seem to be very different one each other. Uh, what is interesting in, in, this, in this point of view is what was discovered by uh, the London group uh, recently uh, uh, is that sometimes um, these axonal transports or vesicle transport, uh, we, we, we are focused about uh, that everything has to be has to happen in the axon and so it's to be to be cell intrinsic. So it's the defect of the single gene in the axon which causes the axonopathy. Instead, it is interesting because for BICD2, which is an adapter molecule which serves to to, to, to allow the, the function of dinain and, and, and its cargo to be transported along the axon. In reality, uh, when it's mutated and causing this motor neuropathy, which is called uh, um, SMALED, so it's, it's, a, it's a developmental motor neuropathy, um, when they generated the mouse in which uh, this gene is deleted everywhere, you have the same phenotype observed in the human, so a motor neuropathy, uh, left dependent or non-left dependent, uh, but the motor neuropathy. When they generated the mouse in which uh, the, the, the genes was mutated only in neurons, they did not sell anything. So the mouse was perfect. Instead, when, when they generated a mouse in which the gene was mutated in, in muscle, again, they observed the same phenotype of the total knockout. So in reality, the problem is not in the axon, but is in the muscle. And in reality, is in the mechanism in which at the nerve, uh, neuromuscular junction, the, 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 the kinase, uh, the, so the DNA in uh, the ICD2 complex transport neurotrophin from the muscle into the nerve. Uh, 
neurotropin, which are essential for the survival of the nerve or the neurons. And that's why if you have a problem in this uh, translocation, you have uh, an impairment in axonal function and then you have neuronal degeneration. So is a cell extrinsic mechanism causing the neuropathy. And probably it's not the only one. Uh, probably there were many others. And it's also a link, probably why, in some cases, the same gene may cause a myopathy, distal myopathy, or a motor neuropathy. So we will see probably more in the future about this. On the other way, uh, it could be less intuitive why a chaperone, which is, for example, a HSH, HSPB1, so the action protein B1, can cause uh, an axonal neuropathy or can cause ALS or can cause uh, motor neuropathy. In this case, chaperones are important for uh, the uh, <clears throat> dynamics of the microtubules. So uh, it was shown that mutant HSPB1 <laughs> overstabilize microtubules, so they are more sticky stabilized, so they are no more dynamic. And this activates an enzyme which is called uh, HDAC6, so in, in stone deacetylases, which deacetylates uh, the, 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 the tubulin, the tubulin, and so provoke a damage in the microtubule system. So the, 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 the mutant HSPB1 alter this enzyme, so overactivate the enzyme, and this enzyme causes a disruption and disgregation in microtubules, so impacting on the axonal transport. That's why it causes an axonal neuropathy. Also, the same enzyme, the same um, chaperone is important because uh, uh, interfere with the um, neurofilaments, so uh, it causes uh, alters the phosphorylation neurofilaments, and they became um, so it uh, reduces the, the, the possibility to transport neurofilament and favors aggregations uh, uh, and disruption of the network, these neurofilaments, also impacting on axonal transport. So this is linking a chaperone to axonal transport. And this is why you have an axonal neuropathy in this case. But keep in mind HTH6, uh, so this histone deacetylase enzyme, because it, you see it's important in other uh, CNT neuropathies, and it it's probably is a key molecule in many of them. On the other side, it was shown that in these patients, there was also an impairment in the function in, micro, in, in the mitochondria. Uh, it was also related to the transport of mitochondria. In reality, recently, uh, the group of Vincent Tillman was showing that this same chaperone is working in the in the in mitochondria in cells, so intermembrane space. It controls proteostasis. So uh, if they are mutated, protostasis is no longer controlled, then you have a stress in the mitochondria, uh, which are um, less functioning. Uh, so there is a reduction in energy production. And that's why also those contributes probably to uh, the generation of, of the axonal damage. So axonal transport and mitochondria are probably are strictly related. And so they, they, they work together. And probably are the, a different phase uh, 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 of the same coin. So the, the, the most frequent uh, wow. gene mutated in a, in, a, in mitochondria, which causes an axonal neuropathy, is in mitofusin two. Mitofusin two is is important for uh, mitochondria dynamic. It's important for the for the fusion of mitochondria. Instead, there are other uh, genes, uh, the RP one, OPA one, and GDA. P1, which are important instead for the fission, so to separate mitochondria. Mitochondria to function, have to fuse and, and, and separate continuously in order to be uh, correctly functioning. And of course, we have to move along the axon in specific area to supply for energy, but also for buffering, for example, if you have an increase in calcium in a different area of axon. So what happens if you have a mutation in mitofusin, you have a defect in the mitochondrial dynamics, but also you have a defect in, in the transport of mitochondria and not the axon. So those are uh, <clears throat> chemograph analysis in which you observe the mitochondria, the movement of mitochondria along the axon. In, in, in vitro, of course, you can do this. And you see if mitofusin is mutated, 
they don't move. So they are mostly blocked. Uh, you, you can see much better here. Uh, there are nice video in which you can observe these events. If you reintroduce mitofusin in this, in, this, uh, in these neurons, then start again mitochondria to be to move uh, along the axon. So mitochondria is not moving, so it's not buffering calcium and is not uh, producing a, a, or energy in a, in, a, in a proper site where you uh, you want they they do this these events, especially at, at the nodes uh, in the area of the nodes around you. And uh, <clears throat> what was shown is that mitochondria move uh, so uh, interact. Uh, with uh, motors uh, um, by this molecule, which is called Myro1, which is also which is also a substrate of the stone dead CT lases. And what was shown recently is that when you have mutation in mitofusing two, the stone acetylases are in a NAS, and there is the acetylation of Myro1 and the acetylation of microtubules. In both cases, if you deacetylate Myro1 or microtubules, you block the transport of the mitochondria on the track, so on the microtubule itself. So linking uh, axonal transport to mitochondrial function itself, but also linking this molecule, histone deacetylases, to a different mechanism which causes axonal neuropathy. So uh, molecules which have been developed to <clears throat> inhibit uh, histone deacetylases, which have been tested for, uh, uh, for example, uh, mutants for uh, uh, H-shot proteins could be, have been tested also in mutants with mitofusin 2 and seems to be working. So uh, we are trying to, uh, we, we are seeing that there are many different mechanisms that can pull together uh, different mutation and different effects in the axon. And if you act on these single targets, you may probably unify with a single therapy or uh, oligotherapies, uh, the treatment of many different kinds of axonal, axonal neuropathy. Uh, just to keep on the uh, transport of mitochondria, also mutation in this uh, channel, which is called TRPV4, and which is responsible for congenital dyst asthma, <coughs> scapuloperone asthma, or uh, a subtype of CMT2, even in this case, uh, the, the, the leakage of this uh, ion channel uh, affects the, the mitochondrial transportation. Uh, this is an event which is related to the fact that the leakage uh, of the channel activates a calcium-dependent kinase, which uh, phosphorylates <clears throat> MIRO1 and so impair Myro one function and therefore impair mitochondrial transportation. So uh, again, a, a, a mutation in the ion channel affects uh, axonal transport and affects the function of mitochondria. So linking together once again different genes. It was also shown that the, 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 the this same channel again by the, by the group of uh, Charles Summer also affects the. Um, um, the regulation of actin cytoskeleton. So normally, uh, if, if the channel is properly working, so it's an active uh, se uh, um, sequester ROA, so inactivates ROA. Instead, when the channel is leaky, for example, when it's mutated, activates uh, the CAN kinase and then activates ROA. If ROA is activates, uh, the, 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 the actin cytoskeleton uh, is uh, changes the states, uh, so it favors the formation of stress fibers, favor the formation of actin uh, uh, myosin uh, contraction system, and this impairs axonal outgrowth, and that's why it may impair the development of neurons and may generate congenital form of SMA, but also promotes um, denervation. So uh, alters the end terminal of, of, of the neurons and promotes denervation, which is also an explanation why you have denervation uh, neuromuscular junction in uh, motor neuropathies. So <clears throat> um, regulation of, of calcium and impairs axonal transport, can impair mitochondrial function, and can impair also the, 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 the proper actin cytoskeleton uh, 
make a reason why you develop an important axon neuropathy. In general, active cytoskeletal, you will see, is involved in many other cases of, uh, of the function of the neuron of Schwann cells. There is a nice um, radio made by Nicolas Tricot recently uh, published in uh, Frontier Cell Neuroscience, in which you may appreciate how uh, disruption of the actin cytoskeletal impairs many others is important in many other forms on CMT. And, and that's why uh, more, more uh, genes which are uh, regulating ROA, so they activate or deactivate ROA, can be responsible for CMT neuropathies. I just want to conclude in, in one minute, uh, making the notes that also uh, regulating the processes of, of RNA or the proteostasis may impair uh, axonal function. There are many genes which are important for changing tRNA, which uh, ends up in, uh, in dysfunction of axons. And this was recently shown by the group of uh, Albina Giordanova that probably this is because they impair. So these molecules interfere with the actin bundling and therefore interfere with uh, the, the, the function of, of this uh, actin um, cytoskeleton in regulating Trans transcription and translation. So it affects all the translation and the proteostasis of all the proteins. So it's not sufficient to uh, deserve to this mutant uh, a single enzyme to, to, to read out all the disease, but you really have to act uh, on the machinery which is involved. In the same way, this same enzyme can interfere again at the neuromuscular junction, for example, with other receptors, for example, track B, which are important in this case in the internalization of other trophic factors, such as BDNF, into the axons, and therefore interfere with the, 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 the mechanism we supply axon in, the, in, in the, which axon are supplied by by muscle, so uh, and that's why develop an axonal neuropathy. So the conclusion is that all these events are strictly regulated, and uh, molecular pathway probably are not so many. Are you can can be reconducted to to a, to a narrow pathway of molecule which affect all this function. That's why end up uh, with uh, axonal neuropathy, and this is true for primary axonal neuropathy and secondary. Uh, axonal degeneration in demyelinating CMTs. Uh, the conclusion has been already given, and just just want to conclude with a little video. Uh, this is a person with CMT. Uh, it, is, it, it is affected, but you see, it, it, it can still play tennis. So you, he developed a specific orthosis system to, to allow him to play tennis in a proper way. So having a CMT, even if at the moment we have not specific drugs uh, uh, could be anyways facilitated by uh, um, orthosis. So you can, you can have a, a normal life, uh, uh, if, of course, if the disease is not too much severe. And, and I stop here, I think, otherwise I'm, I, I was already too long, I'm sorry. No, I, I disagree. Uh, you were perfect. And thank you for this nice and very detailed presentation that gives a glimpse of the complexity of these um, situations. I hope that uh, David Parison has some questions to address you because I cannot find any questions in Q&A. Uh, in fact, I asked, uh, I answered by text one question that uh, in that case, I'm going to reproduce by, by voice as well. So all the uh, all the webinars are recorded and then they are available through our website. In our website, you can uh, type uh, our address and slash webinars and you go to the webinars uh, page. If you want to go through the menu, you click on education and then on webinars and you will find the access to the previously uh, existent webinars. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, anyone wants to put some questions. Use the the raise hand tool or enter the question in Q and A, and I will unmute you for for voicing the question. David, do you want to ask anything? 
Can you hear me now? Is uh, disturbed the audio? You're coming a bit rough. Is it, is it better now? No, no. I need to disconnect and connect again. Just one moment. In the meanwhile, yeah. while David does that, I, I will, uh, I will uh, try to fill in with one of those unfreezing questions so of mine so uh, when you think about uh, pato mechanisms uh, do you see an evolution or a difference when you can see the uh, early onset or a late onset uh, uh, establishment of the condition or not uh, uh, stefan well i think we still cannot cannot answer to this question in a proper way so um what we know, for example, is that uh, late onset uh, malignant protein zero uh, disorders are due to mutations uh, which do not uh, impair too much um, or in in a, in, in a, um, a stringent way the function of of the protein. So it does not impair the, the completely the adhesiveness of the molecule. So there's no a problem in. Uh, mounting a, a myelin function and therefore to have a normal uh, function of the nerve. So if you still have myelinating uh, Schwann cells, you do not affect axons early and therefore you, you might maintain a function of the nerve for a longer time. Uh, however, probably the, the hypoglycosylation of these proteins affects in a different way the metabolism of the Schwann cells. And this is something which happens little by little uh, and some little by little uh, on the axonal function. That's why you end up with uh, an axonal deficit very late in in in, um, in the life of this person. But this is, I think, probably apply for also other uh, other kinds of, of CMT. So when the mechanism is 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 not so stringent and not so urgent for the function of Schwann cells or axons, it will take time to manifest and therefore uh, you will see an effect only later on in, in this person. But this is a, simply, a, a simple explanation uh, to something which is not clearly really well understood. Okay, thank you. Marco Mancucci, uh, you have a question. I've allowed you to talk. Do you want to unmute and, and voice your question or should I read it? Well, Marco may have some uh, problem with voicing it, so I'm going to read it. Which target uh, genetic test is correct to perform before doing a panel or all exome sequencing in a classical CMT phenotype? P.S. Could we see the final slide about conclusions? Thank you. Uh, to see the so, final slides, I think I have to to come back uh, in, into the... Um... Yes, you need to share it again, please. And uh, don't forget uh, which targeted genetic testing yes. would you perform before a panel or all exome sequencing uh, request. Oh, we have the final the conclusion slide. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I, I, I thought it was, I was really late, so I, I ran a little bit at the end, and it's my fault. Um, so re regarding the, the, the question, uh, usually what we do uh, is to, of course, to understand, to, to catch if it is a demyelinating or axonal form, which is very important. Because if it is demyelinating form, <clears throat> you know that uh, the majority of cases is due to a duplication of PMP22. Duplication of PMP22 is an event that you can uh, appreciate much better if you do M MLPA. Otherwise, you, you don't catch it. Or at least normally with the NGS panel that we are using, it's quite difficult to catch it. And therefore, when we see a demyelinating force, uh, we do MLPA. If MLPA is negative, then we proceed with an NGS panel. And in, in our institute, we, we check for all the genes. So we do one single panel uh, with more than 150 genes. And we check all of them known or barely known 
uh, to, to, to discover if there is variants that can explain the, the disease. Uh, you can also proceed by sequencing uh, if you if there are some insights suggesting that could be that specific gene uh, in, to do an NGS panel, at least in Italy, it takes more or less eight months. So it could be a long time. And so if you are sure it is, a, I don't know, connecting 42, uh, you, you just go for uh, sequencing. And then if it's not that one, uh, you, you can proceed with the panel. So it's up to you. But definitely, if it's demaninating, First, you have to check for PMP22 duplication, and then uh, for uh, you, you can run NGS. Thank you. Uh, someone asks uh, why the same point mutation in PMP22 can cause sometimes in some members a HMPP and in others CMT. And they ask if you have an explanation for that. It's a tricky one. <laughs> I have no explanation, to be honest. Uh, usually, uh, if it's a loss of function, it should be the protein is not produced, and so it's the same as you as you delete the gene. So you should have an HMPP. Instead, um, if it's a gain of function, it should develop a, a, a CNT1A that could be. Uh, a, CM1, a CMT1A a phenotype or even uh, a degenerate sotacin of type, so it could be much more severe. Uh, I, I guess that um, uh, sometimes you have patients with an HMPP which uh, have also developed also a sort of uh, polyneuropathy, so not a, a single mononeuropathy, but a polyneuropathy, probably because they damage much more the nerves. So it depends also probably of the um, behavior of those patients. I, I, I'm not sure if there is another explanation from the molecular point of view, uh, uh, why they may have a little bit different phenotype. I don't know. There could be maybe some, some uh, modifying genes that, that uh, can also be present, uh, can modify a little bit the, the phenotype. Uh, at the moment, uh, to my knowledge, uh, I just jumped at these uh, these uh, slides, but there are diagenic forms from CMT. But to my knowledge, they are uh, nowadays related to these two genes, mitofusin two and GDAP one. Uh, there are patients which if they present both a variant in mitofusin two and GDAP one, they have a, a neuropathy because probably. There is a synergistic effect on the ATP production, therefore they have depletion of energy. Whereas if you have a single uh, variation, it doesn't affect so much by itself the the, 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 the function of the mitochondria, so parents are practically normal. I don't know if Davide has a other answer to this question. Not much to add. Uh, there are mutations in the causing an intermediate phenotype. And uh, some uh, CNT1A patients very rarely can show HLPP phenotype and vice versa, HLPP showing a CMT phenotype. And we don't know why. Can you hear me now, Stefan? Uh... Yeah. Okay. You're back. Coming back perfectly. Uh, so there were there was an additional question regarding uh, the pipeline of existing treatments, namely about gene therapy as well. I think we can delay those questions for the next uh, webinars where we discuss uh, gene therapy and treatments and perhaps uh, stop this webinar here because we are now uh, fully on time. And I would like to ask, uh, to thank very much uh, David for the nice introduction to the CMT month and for the introduction of Stefano that is done and to Stefano Previtali for this brilliant uh, presentation that you will be able to review afterwards uh, by going to our website and looking at uh, the recording. So uh, without further ado, thank you very much and see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Antonio. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye.